Hello, happy Thursday everyone. Last week we talked about cutting out our orange peels using the templates. This week I'm going to show you how to do the faux needle turn applique, which is simple and quick. And I'm using my Bernina today because it was easier to set up because my FAF is set up for embroidery and I don't even have my Janome set up at all. So I'm using stitch 1303, which is a straight stitch at two millimeters and a tension of four on this machine. I'm also using my number 20 open toed embroidery or open toed applique foot. On the Janome, it's the F2 foot. And this is the open toe. And I've also moved my needle to the far right so that you're stitching on the edge of this foot on the inside. So to do this faux, we have a piece of fabric. We're going to add a piece of water-soluble stabilizer. And I'm trying to get all this so it's easy to see on the camera. This is Vilene, or here in the Netherlands called Visalina. It's called Soluflays. It is a woven water-soluble stabilizer. It is great. I use it for a lot of things. I use it a lot in my embroidery, but this is my favorite stabilizer. I go through it like it's going out of style. Then we take a template and we put the violin on the right side of your fabric with our template on top. So it all goes together. It does not have to be perfect, 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 but close, really close would be best. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to drop our needle. And we want to sew on this inside line like we discussed last week of cutting, this is your raw edge or the actual size of your template. So we're going to sew very slowly. On this line, and if you can see, I'm right on the line. I'm sorry for the camera shake, but I'm getting off a little bit. There we go. And this machine has auto hover, so the foot popped up for me to turn it to go backwards. <laughs> and So this is very simple, very easy, very quick way of doing it. I made this video and my other camera that I was trying to use only took like one second videos. So now we've reached back to the top. You notice I have my needle down, which makes it easy to pivot and turn with this auto hover. So I'm going to cut my threads and then what we're going to do is we're going to easier to get it started. I'm going to peel this paper off. I forgot to cut it out. 
shame on me. I should have cut it out while I still have my lines. But what you want to do is cut this out. I should have done it when I still had my quarter inch. But I'm just going to estimate it and come around the edge here. And leave a little bit of seam allowance. I'm sorry I messed this up for you, but I could go and do another one if I had to. But you give it a little bit of a seam allowance. And uh, try to keep it between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. There we go. I'm sorry I messed it up. So we're going to pull the center out now. And see, we have our shape here. And then what we want to do is pull this violin up a little bit. And we want to snip it. And then cut it down the middle like this and then we want to turn this applique right side out because remember you sewed this on the right with the wrong side up so now we're turning it so we get the right side out and we Get our corners. We need something to push them. And we get our corners all pushed up in here. And, uh, and there we go. We have it. This is rough because when you press it and you get it all straight, it will be a perfect, and you'll have a quarter inch seam allowance under here. So when you go to sew it on your, let's see if I can get this other corner out. I usually use chopsticks, but I don't have them. The back of a chopstick is really perfect for this because it's flat and it doesn't puncture your your thing so you have your see you can even see in the shadow here your seam allowance so we take our background fabric now if you have an older straight stitch machine put the thread in the back if you have an older straight stitch machine I'm just going to put this down this is not going to be very neat or very pretty because I haven't got everything I should also be pressing this and making it perfect but I'm just going to do a rough so if you have a straight stitch only machine you can come in here and you can straight stitch all along this edge really quickly and I'll let's do it and I've come in a little too much, but you can see here, I've added a quick, the camera needs to focus, a quick little straight stitch. And you can come around this edge and catch that seam allowance, and it will give you a nice edge. Also, if you have an older machine, you can also use a zigzag. I'll use uh, like a three millimeter zigzag because you want it very naughty with uh, about a two a two millimeter wide zigzag because you just want to catch the edge of this applique. So here we go. We're going to bring the foot down. 
and it goes into hover mode so we get it so we're going to put the needle down and see where it goes and I have the needle pushed to the right so it's sewing along this edge so we're just going to do a nice little zigzag and catch on and off this piece and I'm not doing this perfect I would do I would go much slower but trying to get the video all in the time allotment is hard and there we go there we have our little zigzag here for you now the traditional way is to use a blanket stitch and again you notice that my blanket stitch starts on the right you can move it to the left and reverse it if you're left-handed that's okay that's up to you how you choose to sew something so you want it right on the edge this blanket stitch to catch and remember you have a quarter inch seam allowance so it's going to be see I just got off not but I'm trying to work with a camera in front of me so we do it and if you had matching thread see how nice that little blanket stitch is when you go slow and you get it right on the edge and catch the edge but you can use your decorative stitches you can use lots of things uh, like you can one of my favorite is satin stitch applique so we want to move the needle to the left to the right I'm sorry and this one's 2.5 I'm going to lower it to 2 in, two millimeters wide and it needs to be about 2.5 this thread would actually go this is very very fine thread so and it depends on the weight of your thread how thick if you're going to use 50 weight a 0.3 a 0.3 millimeter length on this but this is 150 weight so it's never going to be that real smooth but I had it set up from piecing because when I piece I use a 1.5 millimeter long straight stitch which makes it almost impossible to rip out but makes it very very secure so we're going to lower our presser foot again, get it all lined up, drop our needle. And if you're really good at this, you can taper to your points and make them perfect points with that satin stitch. not doing right so, oh I'm caught in my feed dogs so there we go and it's gonna be a slow going Thing because these satin stitches are very narrow and very fine we use our scissors and there we go there's our satin stitch and this is a two millimeter which is a very very fine satin stitch Many machines can't do a two millimeter. My Janome can't. It can't do anything under 2.5 millimeters. And uh, let's see what else we have here for decorative stitches. Uh, 
you have all these this machine has like 1980 stitches so it's like a never-ending story but you can use any decorative stitch for this and this is defaults at nine millimeters but you don't want it that big so we're going to make it about three so you can see it on here but it's four millimeters long so we're going to go down to two so the design starts to come back out too long so we can have a little bit of the design come out and this all the machines are different what they can and cannot do and the thing is just enjoy move it to the right move the, push the needle down but your your options are unlimited if you have one of these modern machines I'm going to press my pattern in so it will stop at the next end perfect end of the pattern and this machine automatically cuts raises the presser foot but see here's my little decorative stitch for you let's see if we can get it to focus there we go and I mean your options are endless the blanket stitch is the most traditional way of doing this but with our modern machines our options are almost unlimited and you can choose to lay this applique any way you want we'll choose let's see here and you have to do because this machine defaults everything to to two and here we go and here's another option and I mean I'm just randomly picking these stitches out for you and here we go and I just broke my thread and my machine tells me I just broke my thread so so here we go I'm still figuring this out. I just got this machine for myself just before Christmas. And as many of you know, it has been in the shop to get fixed. There it goes. So I'm still really learning it. But this machine has lots and lots of capabilities. So raise the presser foot. Put our thread in the back but this this machine has those super large Bernina bobbins that n hardly ever go empty so we want to put our needle down and see I broke this I think I broke the thread again but let's see. Nope, I didn't. Let's see what I did. It does not like this stitch at all. So this is the things that we learn that it doesn't like this feather stitch, but it liked the other one just fine. So, I mean... Like I said, I'm learning. I hope this helps you. But like I said, my favorite 
one of my favorites is satin stitch especially with raw edge it just and I'm going to make this stitch a little wider I'm going to make it go to a three and you'll see like a more normal satin stitch for this And it's a very slow, but I use a lot of satin stitching in mine because I think it just gives it an incredible, finished, perfect look. But you can choose how wide to make your stitches. You can choose how to narrow to make them within the limits of your machine. Some machines won't do narrow, but here's a three millimeter, which is a very, very standard satin stitch. It actually not bad at all. But see, I like that, which is very difficult, much more time consuming, much more accurate is that two millimeter versus a three millimeter. And, uh, but the blanket stitch is the cleanest, most beautiful way. And if you had used, if I had used blue thread, but I wanted to use white so that it's easy to see. See, I would have used a blue on this and you wouldn't have even seen those stitches at all. Well, this is how to manually apply your applique, how to faux stitch it. Previously, we learned how to cut these out. I hope this helps you. Next week, we're going to use the embroidery module, which makes everything perfectly accurate. So, we'll see you next week. And I hope you're enjoying under learning how many possibilities you have to make this simple quilt but based on what stitch you use, what color fabric, if you do needle turn, if you do raw wedge, if you use a uh, uh, fusible web, or if you just use glue, all of them will make the quilt just a little bit different and yours because no one else will have chosen that stitch or that fabric or that color of thread so it becomes very personal even though it is a simple quick easy pattern so I've pretty much decided how I'm going to do mine I've been auditioning stitches and mine is going to be done in the hoop but I'm going to do a very very fancy uh, decorative stitch along the edges of mine and I will show you a video when we get to the end of this series because I want you to be able to start your quilt as soon as possible. We'll see you next week with basic embroidery tips and I will have the the embroidery files should already be up online for you to play with. I made the decision I gave you EMB files which are pure embroidery files. If you have software, you should be able to change the stitches. You should be able to edit the size. You should be able to do whatever you want to with the embroidery file. And that is up to you as I am putting no copyright or anything because I want you to be free to how you want to use it. I want to wish everyone a good day, and I hope you have a good week. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask me in the group. So I will see everyone in the group, and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye.